Hi everyone, don't forget to subscribe and like to our channel right now. It's Ong Beng Hee, right here on the RSS with HD. Welcome to the RSS with HD with the dastardly duo of Rajasale and <laughs> Harish Diol. Oh, he's still looking clean, even though we're going to get our haircuts on the 10th of June. Hey! Okay, right. Of course, uh, we've got someone really special because we haven't seen him for a long, long time. He's obviously been out of the country. Let's welcome him onto the show. Well, let's welcome to the show. Hi, Hi how are you? Hi, guys. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, we're very oh, excited to have you on because we haven't seen uh, uh, we haven't seen you. You know, you're you're in a Middle Eastern country, but you're getting more whiter than white. Uh, yes, especially when you. Uh, I've stayed home for four months, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that, that... you're comparing it to the wall behind him, is it, Rashid? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is not a racist comment either. No, oh, yes, please. Yeah, especially in this moment. Uh, anyway, uh, Benji, thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, Rashid, can I start uh, BBQing him? Oh, yes, go. Take it away. Okay. Anyway, uh, Benji, um, you know, you're in Qatar right now. For those who don't know Benji, he is the former Asian champion. Once upon a time, he was the world number seven player. And he now serves as the uh, Qatar Squash Federation Director of Coaching. That's correct, Bengi? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, how has your Qatar adventure been? Um, you know, I, I moved here, I think, in uh, July 2017. Uh, now, exactly three years. Uh, it's, it's, the journey has been, uh, you know, I, I think it's been very smooth. Uh, obviously, Took me a while to to get used to the culture here. You know, uh, things are a little bit different, obviously. Uh, but a few few months, uh, I, I think I kind of learned the rope and I kind of got used to the lifestyle here. So it's been uh, it's been fantastic actually in the last uh, three years. Uh, Benki, when you say different, I mean, uh, could you cite some examples? Uh, p people would love to to know what's life like in uh, Qatar and how do you compare it with Malaysia? So basically. Obviously, you know you 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 will not get um, a lot of your favorite a lot of favorite food here. Um, you know, in the beginning, I think you need to get to know a lot of um, Malaysians. Um, fortunately, we 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 were introduced to quite a quite a large uh, Malaysian community here. So um, you know, I think we just got used to just being here. You know, I think even working environment. Um, one of the advantages here is um, the working hours is a little bit shorter than Malaysia. Um, and, you know, just uh, simple things like uh, things that you can do in Malaysia. Obviously, you, you have to adjust over here a little bit. Um, but, you know, now being here for three years, you kind of you, you actually enjoy living here because, um, especially for my family, for my kids, it's, um, it's a very safe country. You know, they, they can go to a uh, shopping mall and they can run around, you know, and we don't need to be holding their hands all the time, you know. So uh, just little things like that. Okay, that's that's nice to hear. Now, um, how has your, you know, um, coaching, uh, director of coaching stint been uh, for the past three years? Um, you know, because the standards uh, clearly differ, uh, Qatar and Malaysia. Um, how, sure. how, how has it been for you? Um, well, I've not started yeah. grilling him and he's really sweating, oh my. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why. If you don't okay. mind, let me switch on the aircon properly. No <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, so really I think hot, when... Um, hot question. Uh, yeah, it, it is actually. It's 50 degrees, by the way. Whoa! <laughs> so in my house, outside. Okay. okay. Um, uh. You know, my role here is not just on court. Um, okay. You know, it's basically... Um, I run all the program. That means from grassroots to organizing events, uh, whether it's local events, uh, professional events, and also um, you know 
trying to promote squash in, in Qatar. As you know, um, Qatar is hosting the, the World, World Cup, the Football World Cup in 2022. So sports, it's, it's huge in, in Qatar. Not just football, but they are trying to promote every single sport there is to, to promote. And, um, you know, we are very fortunate to have our number one player, Abdullah Tamimi, who is, um, I think, currently 29 in the world. And he is, because of him, you know, so we are able to, to use him and to promote squash within the schools and also the clubs. Uh, so my job scope here is, is a lot wider, not just on court, but also um, whatever is happening off court. How, how big is squash in Qatar at the moment? Um, I mean... Is it like, you know, like badminton here, you know, or, or is it, is it you know, um, not really popular? How, how is it like that? I, in terms of uh, popularity, in terms of people playing, it's nowhere near as big as Malaysia, you know, it's, it's a small country. Um, you know, my job here is to, to make sure that I, we are trying to attract as many Qataris to play squash. And the population is very small here. So, uh, you know, we... We are uh, the difficulty that I face here is to to get these kids from the school who they have plenty of choices and their, their number number one choice at the moment is always football. So um, for me, that's the biggest uh, one of the biggest challenges being in this uh, in this job. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Bengi, there, there were there were conversations just uh, before and after you left Malaysia. You know, there were calls saying that you should be serving Malaysia. Um, what, what do you think of such calls? Because there, there, there are two different ways of looking at it. Some people say it's a brain, brain drain. But other people feel that, hey, at the end of the day, whoever offers, you know, it's, a, it's globalization at the end of the day. It's an open market. Whoever offers the, the right perks and benefits, you know, and, and it's, it's your choice. Well, what do you got to say about such talk? Um, you know, I think without sounding negative in, in any way and, you know, um, for me at the time in 2007, 2015 when I finished playing and I, I worked for Squash Rack Association of Malaysia, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful that they gave me a chance to be one of the national coaches. Um, but I, at the time when Qatar had this opportunity, uh, for me, I think it was just um, a huge um huge jump from a national coach to being a director of coaching. Um, yeah. You know, in my in my case, because I've been playing for 25 years, you know, so um, I've always been known as just a player. So when I finished playing, there, there was a lot of talk about, you know, whether can I do the job? I, I don't have the experience as a coach. I don't have the qualification as a coach. So why should we hire a player? You know, mm. so... Mm, mm. Um, for me, that's very unfortunate because um, we have all dedicated our 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 life to 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 playing the sport. Mm -hmm. And then once you retire, you're asking me where are my papers, where are my qualifications as mm. coaches? You know. So, uh, but if you don't give me the chance to do it, how can I? <laughs> how, how yeah, can and, I attain, and you know? it's interesting that Qatar give you that chance. Qatar, Qatar yeah, give I, you that chance. Fortunately, yes. You know, that's why uh, I'm very grateful. You know, uh, you're talking about Qataris. Uh, you know, just uh, without bragging, my, my, my management, they, they, they are running tennis, badminton and squash. Um, and my, my current president, who's also a, a very popular, popular man in, in football, he's currently the, uh, the chairman of uh, PSG. Mm. So... Mm. You know, for them to be giving me a chance in this role, it, 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 it's difficult you know, to, to say no to them because in terms of um, the job scope, in terms of, in terms of the responsibility and also the, the profile, it's, um, it's a very difficult um, yeah, decision to turn it down. I, I got a question. Yeah, and, and, sorry, sorry uh, Rashid. How, how, what, was the clinch, what was the clincher that got you the, the, the role as the director of coaching? I mean, obviously you're playing... Playing days were, were is, is a big plus, but what was the clincher that, that convinced them to, to give you the role? Yeah, I, I think at the time, um, uh, 
when they took over tennis and squash and badminton association, they were looking for a uh, fresh, uh, fresh start. You know, so they they kind of, they, they wanted um, someone a little bit younger because I think the the previous director he was about um, to to retire. Mm. So they they were looking for someone younger, someone more dynamic, and um, I, I yeah at the time there was an opening, so I kind of applied for it, and um, we had a quick chat, and yeah, found myself here within a, a month or two. Wow, that's 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 uh, good for you. Uh, but but here's the thing: um, in Malaysia, there's always this debate that we don't seem to have any qualms offering foreigners a whole lot of money. Um, but yet, when it comes to locals, we are always afraid to invest heavily in them. Um, but I, I presume this is a you know a syndrome everywhere in the world. Well, what are your thoughts, Benghi? I I think this is the syndrome in perhaps in Malaysia currently. Again, okay. I, I don't know the system in sports uh, the sports uh, side in, in Malaysia. But mm-hmm. when when I first started coaching for um, SRAM, Squash Rack Association Malaysia, um, you know, they, yeah, we always had an issue of salary. You know, in, in my first year of coaching, I, I, I couldn't even get a job with uh, National Sports Council. You know, they, they didn't approve my application. You know, I, I why? Was, uh, why didn't they approve? Did they give you a justification to why they didn't approve it? Um, basically, they're saying, um, besides, from what I what I was requesting in terms of my salary, I didn't have the necessary qualification as a coach. And again, the, the usual, no result, no qualification. Uh, mm-hmm. Why should we pay Ping He this this much? But sorry, when you, know, you say no result, it's what academic result or what result? In terms of coaching results oh, on the okay. players. Okay. Uh, you know, so again, you know, pl- plenty of reasons. Uh, I, I don't blame them for it. Um, but I, I thought at the time it was um, it's quite harsh, you know. I think, you know, I'm I'm very grateful to uh, the president at the time, Mr. Huang. Uh, he was the one that actually fought for me to be in mm-hmm. this uh, in this job, you know, working for SRAM. So and also uh, the association they, they supported me. So uh, that's how I started my coaching with uh, SRAM. Or else I, I've probably left the country. I've gone to America. I've gone somewhere else because I could not get the job in Malaysia, which is quite sad actually. Uh, Rashid, it seems to me, or it sounds uh, that we are quite templated in the way we approach uh, talents, don't you think, Rashid? Yeah, very much so, because, um, you know, it it seems that, especially with squash, there's not many top Uh. players in Malaysia. You would think that, you know, once you retire, you're you're already considered uh, someone who is has that experience and being able to 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 take the lead, uh, at least give give you the chance to be able to lead um the, the 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 younger talents but we don't do that we, we seem to put that aside we, it's the same with with uh, a lot of the other sports uh, I, I won't mention what the sports are but you know as soon as you reach peak you're, you're being told to start right at the bottom again it's unique with squash because i think with you guys there's not many of you so and you you know you, you have so much experience so I, I i get very sad that you know that talent like you have to uh, is serving another country. Yeah, you know, I think um, it's, uh, for some reason only Malaysian, right? Like we are always uh, we want someone who's experienced, we want someone who is qualified. But if we don't give the person a chance to 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 start somewhere, how how can he get those qualifications? You, you know, like you you are talking about someone like um, let's say someone like. Dato Nico, if she wants to coach, you, you cannot say that she doesn't have qualification in coaching because she has, you know, dedicated her, her life in playing and bringing glory to the country, serving the country. And, uh, and this is done without any salary. You know, we get allowance, we get uh, supported by the National Sports Council and, and our association, but it's not a job. You know, you, you don't have the security, you don't have... Um, any salary basically unless you find your own sponsorship and you kind of you do it on your own really but Benghi you must admit that not all good players become good coaches that's correct uh-huh. so there must but, be some form of you know way to gauge uh, one's capabilities before they take up a new role so what are your thoughts about that 
Well, or do you I, think I that cannot... it should be some form of leeway because you've played at the highest level and you know, um, so that means you're, you know, like universities, they've got credit system. So you've earned X amount of credit system so that you can bypass it. Do you think that this would actually be more feasible for, you know, individuals like yourself? Definitely, I think that there should be like um, an advanced course, you know, like if you really need those paper qualification, eventually I think everybody will need to, to sit for it, uh, you know, just to justify your salary and your position. But um, yeah, I, I think maybe, you know, like in England, uh, as I was speaking to some of my uh, English uh, friends, they, they go through like uh, advanced coaching courses. You know, just to 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 make sure that they are they are all qualified. You know, they don't have to go through from they don't they didn't need to start from the bottom. They they just started and midway, and then they just carry on going because um, yeah, they so that they they can get the, the necessary papers to to start start working for the association. Um, whereas yeah, I think in Malaysia we are all the same. So it, regardless of whether you have played for one year or twenty years. Uh, whatever contribution you've done for your country, you start from the bottom. So that's that's my take. I, I think. Mm. Uh, Benki, uh, how long more do you think you'll be staying in Qatar? Uh, you know, I think this year is a tough year for everyone. As you can yeah. see around the world, every everybody's struggling. Um, of course, we hope that things will be better. Uh, but for me, uh, as long as Qatar still they still need me, then you know I'll be of their service. Um, again, my short term, I I hope to be here as long as I can, and yeah, I think it has to be both ways, you know. I, I don't want to be here if my my bosses don't want me, then I think it's time to move on. So yeah. All right. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, we we wish you all the best because uh, you know, as long as you're doing well, I I don't think you should go anywhere. Um, however, before we end the show, there we do have a special quiz for you, and this is between you and uh, right. Harish. So uh, I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, um, Benki, uh, what we usually do is we will just throw, um, you know, words to you and you just have to pick one. Yeah? Okay, okay it's, it's, it's that simple. So um, you ready? Can we get started? Yes, ready. Okay. Um, would your retirement plan be... Selling roast duck rice or Penang Char Kway Teow? Duck rice. <laughs> Why? What's your fascination <laughs> with duck rice? You make more money, right, from duck rice? <laughs> okay. Um, Greg Nunes asked me to ask you this, yeah? Milo or Ovaltine? Milo, always. Really? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to be disappointed. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm intrigued to know who's got bigger biceps, you or Nicole David? Nicole David. <laughs> okay. No, not, not that I touch it in any way, but yeah. <laughs> from picture. Notice the disclaimer there in the chain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, a uh, very serious question. Would you be... Would you prefer being the Qatar Squash Federation president or the Youth and Sports Minister of Malaysia? Oh, tough one. Um, can I be both? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, yeah, Youth and Sports Minister, please. Oh, really? Okay. I, yeah. I, I thought you would take the other one. Okay, now <laughs> my last question uh, before we go. If you were a fruit, would you be a banana or a coconut? A banana. <laughs> can't, can't, can't speak Chinese for <laughs> save my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Mr. Ong Beng Ki. Banana. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so uh, much for your time. Thank yeah. you very much, Peggy. Well, you know, uh, to everyone out there, don't forget to uh, subscribe and like to our show. Uh, thank you very much to Amnik, our apparel sponsor. And thank you very much, uh, Benghi, for taking the time out to speak to us. Uh, we hope to uh, wish you all the best 
for your um, squash endeavours uh, in the future there in, in Qatar as well. On behalf of everyone here in, uh, in Malaysia. Thank you so much for your time and all the best and stay safe, guys. Thank you. For Thank all you. of you out there, uh, don't forget to catch us on the RSS with HC. From myself and Harris Joe, it's goodbye for now. See you. Bye-bye.